check this out. We've got something really fun today. This is so amazing. Math and math. Oh man, again? 6.4, solving trigonometric equations using identities. We've solved some simple trigonometric equations before. Let's do this one as a review. So I just need to do some algebra here to isolate sine x. So let's add three on both sides and then divide by four on both sides and then take the square root of both sides. And on the left side, I get plus or minus sine x, but I'm going to move that plus or minus over to the right side in the same step. I got the square root of 3, which is irrational, so I'll leave it as the square root of 3. And the square root of 4 is 2, so I'll simplify it like that. Then I'm going to use my unit circle to determine at what angle is sine sine's ratio root 3 over 2. And it couldn't be plus or minus. That means that it's in all four quadrants. Plus in quadrant 1 and 2, minus in quadrant 3, 4. This has a reference angle of pi over 3 each time. So this would be pi over 3. This one would be 2 pi over 3. This one 4 pi over 3. And this one 5 pi over 3. Now, I could make an individual statement for each one. So x is equal to pi over 3 plus 2 pi n, and just get that single terminal arm each time. But there's a more efficient way to do it. I could get both of these that lie on this same line here in the same statement. If I just added pi each time, pi, pi, or subtracted pi, then I get to the other one. So I can just say, pi over 3 plus pi n, where n is an integer, will give me that one. And then to get this one here, just start with 2 pi over 3, because we like to start with the smallest positive angle that will work. And then I can add pi n also. We've done trigonometric equations like that before. Now let's look at some where we may have to use identities or factoring to help us solve them. This first one is a good example. A sine 2x minus cos x equals zero. If I just add cos x on both sides, then I get sine 2x is equal to cos x. And I don't actually know where to go from there. I suppose I could solve this one graphically, but if this was algebraically, I want a better method. And that would be using our identities. Sine has a double angle identity, and so we can get rid of sine 2x. It is equal to 2 sine x times cos x. And once we sub out that double angle, we see that this term and this term have a common factor. It's cos x. So let's factor it out. We're left with 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. And now I can solve this, because this one here is cos x could equal 0. And this binomial here is 2 sine x minus 1 could also equal 0. And I solve these independently. Now, I do have a domain restriction here in between 0 and 2 pi, including 0 and 2 pi. So where is cos equal to 0? That's when our x coordinate is equal to 0. So that would be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. This one here, do a bit more algebra. So 2 sine x equals 1. So that means sine x equals a half. This sine x equal a half, what's well, positive. So that means it's in quadrant 1 and 2. And it's a reference angle of 30 degrees or pi over 6. So we've got pi over 6 in quadrant 1 and 5 pi over 6 in quadrant 2. So putting together our four answers here, that's what we have. Looking at this equation here, I wouldn't know how to solve this one. We've got cos and sine and then some constants. 
So I probably need an identity to help me out here. Now, we don't have any identities that just have cos in it, but we do have some that have sine squared, and that would be our Pythagorean identity. In fact, 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cos squared x. So I'm going to use an identity and sub that part out. Now I've got everything in cos, in terms of cos and a constant here. And this looks like a quadratic. So I'm going to move it all to one side. And then I'm going to solve it like I would a quadratic. Now that means that I could factor this or use the quadratic formula. Hopefully it's factorable because that's easier. I could, and I'll write optional here, I could sub this trig function out. So let a equal cos x. That will make it a bit easier because once I do that, I just have a squared plus 2a minus 3 equals 0. And I can see, hey, I can really factor that easily. So I've got a plus 3 and a minus 1 equals 0. That means a equals negative 3 and 1. And then here's the end of the optional part here. I sub back out the a that I put in there. So I actually have cos x equals negative 3 and 1. Now, you can factor it without this substitution. You still need to factor it, but what's optional is subbing out the trig function for a. Now I've got two things here. I've got cos equals negative 3. Well, actually, cos never equals negative 3, so there won't be a solution from that one. And so it's just cos equals 1. Where does cos equal 1? And remember, our domain restriction is in between 0 and 2 pi. That would be when x is equal to 0 or 2 pi. Remember, we can check our answers graphically whenever we're doing this, or if it's a multiple choice question, just get, get the answers graphically. Make sure to set the window to match your domain. That way you just get the solutions that um, are possible. Use an identity to solve this equation. And this time we're actually working in degrees. So the first one, we see that there is sine and tan and cos, and we probably don't want all of those things. We probably want to break it down into one trigonometric function if possible. So let's break tan down first and see what happens. Tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. Now, on the right side here, we have cos x and cos x, and they can cancel. Now we just have uh, sine squared x on this side. Let's move everything to this side. And then let's factor out that sine x. And we're left with sine x minus a half here. And now we just need to solve these. If for this first part, we have sine x is equal to 0. And for this second part, we've got sine x minus 1 half is equal to 0. For the first one, we have x equals 0 degrees and 180 degrees. And we would have had 360 degrees, but that's where our domain cuts off. So we can't actually equal it. For this one here, let's do one more algebra step. Sine x is equal to 1 half. That means we're going to be in quadrants 1 and 2 because sine's ratio is positive. And that would be uh, when there's a reference angle of 30 degrees. So our first one would be 30 degrees, and our other one will be 150 degrees. So putting those four solutions together looks like that. For this one, let's use cos's double angle identity. Now, I probably want something with cos in it because I have another cos on the right side. So I'm going to use 2 cos squared x minus 1 to get rid of cos's double angle there. Next, this now looks like a quadratic. So I'm going to move it all to one side. 2 cos squared x minus cos x minus 1 equals 0. Now I'm going to factor. And if you'd like, you can use substitution like we did before. I'll just try to factor this one without substitution. Now I know those have got to be 1s, and there's a plus, 
and a minus. So now I just need to solve each of these binomials separately. This one, 2 cos x plus 1 is equal to 0. And this one, cos x minus 1 is equal to 0. Let's solve the first one. So cos x is equal to minus 1, and then divide by 2. So cos x is equal to negative 1 half. Now, where does that happen? That's when cos's ratio is negative. So that means that it will happen in quadrants 2 and 3 over here. And it has a reference angle of pi over 3. So that would be those two. Okay, so this one would be uh, 1, 2 pi over 3. And this one here would be 4, 5 pi over 3. Now, there's a lot more solutions there, but we'll just leave it at that for now. Let's go solve this one. Cos x is equal to 1, when I add 1 on both sides. Where does cos x equal 1? Well, that's when x is equal to 0. Or 2 pi. Or whatever terminal angle we've got. Okay. Now, putting these two together is actually pretty interesting because in between this angle and this angle is 2 pi over 3. And in between this angle and this angle is also 2 pi over 3. And in between this angle and this angle is 2 pi over 3. So we actually can move 2 pi over 3 each time and get all of these. We could write three separate statements, but that's just not elegant. So let's write it all together. x equals 2 pi over 3 p, where p is an integer, and we've got all the solutions. Let's look at the next one here. We've got a double angle here, and we've got tan in the denominator. Let's get rid of tan first. So I've got sine x over sine x over cos x is equal to cos 2x. Now I'm going to divide by this fraction, so I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So sine x times cos x over sine x. And the sine x and the sine x can cancel, and what we're left with is actually the equation from part a. So this is, is the same as part A, except as part A. Okay, except we have some non-permissible values in this one. We've got sine, okay, sine x cannot equal zero, and cos x cannot equal zero either. That's all our quadrantal angles, or any angles in standard position where the terminal arm lands on the x or y axis. So that means that x cannot equal pi over 2n, where n is an integer. Now that is, that cuts out these solutions right here. Okay, so in this, in this part, we only have the 2 pi over 3 and the 5 pi over 3 and all their terminal angles. So for this side, we've got to watch out for the non-permissible values. It takes away some of our solutions. And since we only have these two solutions now, they don't elegantly make one equation for us. So we'll write it as two. This was part of trigonometry five and six, proving algebraically and graphically trigonometric equations. And we're slipping in six here using identities. So use identities, use factoring, watch out for non-permissible values, and here's some questions. See if you know what you're doing.